Hi and Assalamualaikum. This is the video for our integrated group project and we are from group 5. Our group consists of 4 members which is Melan Han, Nazafira Rashid, Almiruddin Ahmad and Siti Nur Shamila Muhammad Safi. Methanol is also known as methyl alcohol with chemical formula of CH3OH. It is the simplest series of organic compounds called alcohols, consisting of methyl and hydroxyl group. The methanol is a light, volatile, colorless, and a flammable liquid. Nowadays, methanol is considered as one of the most useful compounds because of its usage in various industries. For example, it is used in production of acetic acid and formaldehyde, and methanol are also can be used as a fuel in several combustion engines. For the suitable plant capacity for pursuit business or market analysis, firstly the demand of methanol spans up to 35 million tons per year globally. There are about 19 methanol plants with a total production capacity of about 110 million metric tons all over the world. Secondly, according to Chongqi, Petronas Methanol Lagoon, is the biggest methanol plant in Malaysia, has a production capacity of 50,000 metric tons a day or 1.7 million tons a year. Lastly, suitable plant capacity to build the methanol plant by methanol syndrome per height is around 660,000 tons to 2 million tons per year. For the selection of instruments for methanol production process is the steam reforming reactor, which consists of reformer P, compressor, condensation, separation section, and distillation section. Hello there. Now I'm going to present the chapter 2, which is the process flow diagram. At the beginning of the process, methane and excess steam will be mixed in the mixer and the mixture will then be fed into the reforming reactor R101. Inside the reforming reactor, steam reforming or steam methane reforming will occur. This process is crucial in order to produce syngas that contains hydrogen and carbon monoxide. The products formed from this reactor are further fed to condenser through stream S3. The condenser will then remove 95% of the excess steam from the syngas mixture. On the other side, the syngas products are fed into a methanol reactor R102 through stream S5. Inside the methanol reactor, there will be two reactions occur, which are hydrogenation of carbon monoxide gas to produce methanol and the reaction of carbon dioxide gas with hydrogen gas to yield methanol and water. Before the mixture fed into the syngas recovery unit, the products will then fed into the condenser for cooling down to the saturation point of methanol. In the syngas recovery unit, two products will be formed, the bottom and the overhead product. The bottom products will be pumped into the methanol purification unit in D103 and the overhead product will pass the three get pop through stream S7. The feed in the methanol purification unit will be further purified in the distillation column. The pure product will leave this unit as an overhead product and will pass through a condenser and leave as stream S16 that will enter a splitter to split into S17 and S18. Stream S17 will be the final product of this process with the methanol grade of 95% purity. We need to use the Aspen High C software. For the question A, we need to find the vapor liquid equilibrium VLE graph for the mixture in D103 and make a comparison between the data generated from the software and also the experimental data. The conditions that we use for this question First, the property package that we use is Pan Robinson. The temperature given is 58 degrees Celsius and also the components used are methanol and water. This is the table data for the XY graph. We have the data for the mole fraction of liquid methanol and also the mole fraction of vapor methanol. For the graph XY, as we can see from the graph, the blue lines indicate the XY curve. 
the graph is plotted for the mole fraction of vapor methanol against the mole fraction of liquid methanol. As we can see from the graph, if the mole fraction of liquid methanol increase, the mole fraction of vapor methanol also increase. Next, we have the table for PSY graph. For the table PSY, we have the data for the mole fraction of liquid methanol and also the bubble point pressure and dew point. For the graph PXY, the graph is plotted uh, for the pressure in KPA against the mole fraction of liquid methanol S. From the graph, we can see that the blue lines indicate the bubble point pressure while the red lines indicate the dew point pressure. For the experimental data at temperature 331.15 Kelvin, these are the table and also the graph XY and PXY that we get. The comparison that we can make from the data that we get from HC software and also the experimental data. First, the patterns for both plots XY and PXY graph are same. For high seas, the XY plots show that if the mole fraction of liquid methanol increase, the mole fraction of vapor methanol also increase. From the experimental data that we obtain, the XY plots still have the same pattern but the line is not smooth. This is probably because of the chemical property of methanol which is easily volatile compared to the water. For the PSY graph, the dew point pressure from experimental data is higher than the dew point pressure from high seas data. Next, we have to find the phase envelope of mixture in D103. There are several graphs that we obtain for the phase envelope of mixture in D103. The patterns for each graph is different depends on the properties that use for plotting the graph. Next, we need to find the mole fraction of vapor equilibrium over liquid vapor composition and liquid composition of the extreme S3 by using the flash calculation. The units that we use are compressor, cooler and also the separator. These are the assumptions that we use at the feet of compressor and also the composition that we use at the feet of the compressor. Since the separator stream can be separated into vapor phase and liquid phase, thus the final pressure which is 30 bar is already between the dew pressure and also the bubble pressure. We have to design the distillation column for methanol purification unit. Before solving the problem, we have to make a few assumptions. Next, we calculate the mole fraction for methanol and water by using the data obtained from the material balance in Chapter 2 Process Flow Diagram. Then, we do a calculation of changing mass flow rate into the molar flow rate in S10, S11, and S12. After that, we develop a graph. We need to construct an equilibrium curve by using the formula that you can obtain in thermodynamic 2. First step, we use the end-to-end -end equation to find the saturation pressure for the both materials which is methanol and water. Next, we find the relative volatility. From the relative volatility obtained, we substitute it inside the equilibrium curve equation. From this equation, we can tabulate the value of YF and also XF. This value of XF and YF will be plotted inside the YF versus XF graph. Furthermore, we find the number of stages by using the graphical method. We find the value of Q, then we substitute it inside the Q-line equation. From this Q-line equation, we find the Q-line coordinate to be plotted inside the YF versus XF graph. Next, we find the minimum reflux ratio by, substitu by substituting the intersection point of equilibrium curve and Q-line from the graph into the formula. Next, we find the enriching line formula where R will be in between range of 1.2 R minimum and 1.5 R minimum to reach the optimum flux ratio. As R is in between this range, the R minimum, the reflux ratio calculated is equal to 0.12 and 0.15. Next, the stripping line is drawn by extending the XF point into the 45 degree line and then into the intersection point of equilibrium curve and Q line from the graph then we can determine the number of stages. This step is repeated 
for both trials. For trial 1, the reflux ratio is equal to 0.12. From the graph, the number of trays needed is equal to 2.2 trays plus with one reboiler. And lastly, for trial 2, the reflux ratio obtained is equal to 0.15. From the graph, the number of trays needed is equal to 1.6 trays plus one reboiler. In conclusion, the distillation column design in trial 2 is chosen because it has lower theoretical trays required, which is 1.6 trays plus with a reboiler with an optimum reflux of 0.15. In real life, there is no decimal point places for number of trays so it's equal to two trays with a reboiler.